clattering hooves of the ponies followed the Overland Trail of nearly 2,000 miles across a wilderness of sagebrush and granite feared as the great American desert. The trail from St. Joseph followed the Platte River Valley, crossed the Rocky Mountains, circled the Great Salt Lake, and passed over the Sierras to Sacramento. The first ponies left the terminal stations on April 3rd, 1860. 90 stations located in general stores, 400 station men, 80 riders, and 420 horses were needed to maintain the Pony Express. Delivery of letters and news dispatches to California it required months of travel by sailing ship, later 30 days by mule train, and later 20 days by overland stages. Now the po All letters were enclosed in 10 cent stamped envelopes. The rates charged for carrying the letters by pony were $3 for each half ounce to Salt Lake City and $5 to California. No special pony stamps were used in the first months of the express. The envelopes were franked with a running horse. The charge was written on the face of the envelope by the postmaster. Letters received by train from eastern states were assembled with telegrams, news dispatches, and local letters by the express office. They were wrapped together in oil silk to keep them dry. A way bill was signed by the terminal postmasters and enclosed with each group of letters. It was to be signed whenever the mail cart was open along the trail. A leather saddle bag called a mochilla was used to carry the mail. The mail and way bills were carried in the pockets of the motilla. The pockets were called cantinas. They were carefully locked to protect the mail. One cantina was opened by the postmasters along the trail. The others were opened at military forts and terminal stations. The Pony Express riders were called couriers. The couriers were young men selected for their nerves frontier experience and general fitness. They were armed, but depended on the speed of their ponies for protection. Their work was full of adventure and often danger. They rode day and night. Only one motilla was used on a trip. It was transferred from horse to horse and rider to rider on its journey across the frontier. An average of 15 pounds of mail was carried in the four locked cantinas. Each courier rode an average of 75 miles changing horses about every 10 or 12 miles. He changed his motilla from one saddle to openings right over the horn and cantle of the saddle. It was held in place by the courier when he leaped into the seat. Only a few of the couriers were able to stand the terrific pounding and physical strain of the trail. Some rode only a few days, others a few weeks. At least half were riding in opposite directions. Every Pony Express stations were often located at ranches along the trail. Stations varied from tents and dugouts to adobe, brick, or wooden buildings. Couriers passed the motilla on to the next rider at home stations. Home station keepers, acting as postmasters, were provided with keys to unlock the cantina used for way mail. The keeper first removed the way bill and signed the date, time, and his station across its face. Today, old way bills stand as mute evidence of unsurpassed endurance of man and his faithful servant, the horse. Unwrapping the oiled silk package, the station keeper checked through the letters. He removed any that were intended for his station. With letters returned and the cantina again locked, the mail was spread on its way by the new courier. Leaping into his saddle, the courier spurred his horse out of the station. Horses were urged to their fullest ability between relays.
mile after mile was picked off across the plain by the rhythm of the horse's hooves. They were sometimes required to continue the journey when riders failed to arrive or Indians had destroyed the station. On several occasions, couriers rode more than 300 miles without rest. riders seldom failed those who waited anxiously for their arrival. Their horses were selected for speed and endurance. Western bred Mustang horses were preferred by many couriers on the plains. Station after station was left behind. Fort Bridger, Salt Lake City, and Carson City. Only youth born to the saddle could have ridden half-wild Mustangs at top speed day after day. High Sierra Nevadas of California stood as the greatest barrier to this. Across its snow-blocked passes, mules were driven forth to keep the trail open during the winter months. Many of the stock tenders were young boys who had sought adventure on the frontier. The horses of Friday Station on the edge of the Sierras were selected for their strong lungs and sturdy leg muscles. They were larger horses than those used on the plains. Sure-footedness and endurance were more important than speed in picking their way over the treacherous Sierra and passes. One of the first duties of a stock tender was to saddle a fresh horse one half hour before the courier was due to arrive. First, a lightweight saddle blanket was placed on the horse's back and carefully smoothed. Then, the saddle was placed on the horse. The stirrup was hooked over the horn to keep it out of the way, while the cinch was pulled up tight and fastened to keep the saddle from slipping. The saddles were small and made of lightweight and the leather skirts were reduced to a minimum. The wooden box stirrups were used with or without leather protectors called Papadera. It was a modified design of the typical western saddle generally used on the frontier. The saddled horse was led to the tie rail. At each station, two stock tenders were responsible for the care of the horses, and having them bridled, sat and ready for the incoming rider. The courier's arrival was the signal for quick action. Brief words from the station attendants might inform him of the trail ahead or ask about news from the state. The tenth day of travel found the mud-spattered mochilla on the final relay of its journey over the mountains to Strawberry Valley, Placerville, and then Sacramento. News and letters across a shrinking frontier in ten days. The pony trail ended at Sacramento. Letters for San Francisco finished their journey on the Sacramento River boat. Letters were stamped by the receiving postmasters and separated for delivery. Letters for the mining camps were claimed at the local Pony Express office. The Overland Pony Express served those far from home and family as a swift carrier of written communications for a short period of 18 months. In spite of its brief existence, it had marked the path for the first transcontinental railroad and joined the western regions to do this. Most important of all, the Pony Express conquered the terrors of the great American desert and hastened the development of the West. The clattering hoofs of the pony aroused echoes across the plains and valleys that can never be stilled. <laughs> 